give you revelation, knowledge, and insight. And may you continue to increase as you press forward in the Lord in the name of Jesus. Increase in every way, knowing that all things that pertain to life and godliness, he's already given to us. We're going back to Genesis 22. Amen. And we're going to read that that uh, particular storyline in its entirety, in its entirety, amen, because it's necessary concerning uh, where we're going. It's absolutely necessary. Genesis 22, amen, the mountain of uh, Moriah. Moriah is a place of testing. Hallelujah. Moriah is a place of testing. It's a different kind of test, amen, than Mount Horeb, where God meets Moses on the backside of the desert, amen, and tells them his name, I am that I am, amen. My Horeb is different than my Moriah. My, my, my amen, uh, Nebo is different. Praise God. So all the mountains have a significance attached to it, amen. All Mount Carmel is a place of showdown. Glory to God. We are in a type of Mount Carmel season, amen. But this we're talking about is Mount Moriah. In Genesis in the new, uh, 22, in the New King James Version, we're going to read, amen, the storyline in its entirety down through verse 19. In addition to that, we're going to read also 1 Peter 3, 1 Peter 1, I'm sorry, verse 3 through 9, all in the New King James Version. We'll add that to that, amen, uh, because there's so, so much that we're going to glean from and add to ourselves, amen, uh, under the concept of Jehovah Jireh, glory to God, under that concept. Uh, Genesis 22, starting at verse 1, in the New King James Version, it says, Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here am I. Glory to God. Amen. God tested Abraham. Amen. God does test the heart. Verse 2, then he said, Take now your son, your only, your only son Isaac, whom you love, I like that they put that in. Amen. Take your son whom you love and go to the land of Moria, Moria, amen, and offer him there as, amen, a burnt offering. Thank you, Father. One, on one of the mountains that I will tell you. Verse 3, so Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, took two of his young men with him, and Isaac, his son, he split the wood for the, amen, the burnt offering, and arose and went to the place which God had shown him. This term, split the wood, it simply means to make bigger pieces smaller for the purpose of carrying. Amen. Amen. So he prepared the offering. Amen. Prepared the wood for the burnt offering. All the time that he's doing this, preparation for the sacrifice, he's had time to think about what he's doing. Verse 4. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. Abraham, Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkeys, and the lad and I will go yonder and worship, and we will come back to you. So Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac. Isaac is carrying the wood. Glory to God. Amen. So Abraham took the wood, amen, of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac, his son, and took of the fire in his hand and a knife. And the two of them went together. But Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said to him, my father. And he said, here, here I am, my son. Then, he, he, then he, he said, look, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abram said, my son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. So the two of them went together. Then they came to the place of which God told him, and Abram built an altar there and placed the wood in order and bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abram stretched out his hand to take the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him, Amen. From heaven, the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven, amen, and said, Abram, Abram. And he says, here am I. In verse 12, and he said, do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God. Amen. For now I know that you fear God 
since you have not withheld your son, your only son from him. Then Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behind him was a ram caught in the thicket by his, its horns. So Abraham went, took the ram, offered it up uh, for a burnt offering instead of his son. The miraculous thing in verse 3 is that, amen, it is well known that that kind of ram, don't, amen, don't journey up that high on the mountain. Glory to God. Amen. So it's a picture of God's, amen, even greater provision. Verse 14, and Abram called the name of the place, amen, the Lord will provide of Jehovah Jireh, as it is said this day, in the mount of the Lord, amen, it shall be provided. Verse 15 is significant on to verse 19. Then the angel of the Lord called Abram a second time out of heaven. And he said, "My and he said, by myself I have sworn, amen, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son, blessed, glory to God, I will blessings, I will bless you, multiplying, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven, as the sands which are of the seashore, your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies. Glory to God. And in your seed, not as in many, but as one, all nations of the earth shall be blessed because you obeyed my voice. All the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you obeyed my voice. One person Amen's obedience, the amen, the nations, the earth of the earth shall be blessed because that one obeyed, amen, the voice of God. So Abraham turned to his young man and they returned to this young man and they rose and went together to Bathsheba and Abraham dwelt at Bathsheba. Praise God. Just for a minute tonight, I want to deal with this subject. Amen. Your faith must be tested. Glory to God, your faith must be tested. In this, Abraham showed his growing faith in God, amen, which he himself intentionally has cultivated. Glory, amen. And now he came to learn the Lord in a new way. Amen. This is a picture of God, amen, of Christ. But Abraham, when he was tested, he showed his growing faith amen, confidence in God, his growing faith in God, amen, in this test, amen, he learned more about the truth of God, all sufficient nature, thank you, Father, amen, uh, and Isaac's question, this is powerful, Lord, amen, uh, I'm sorry, where is, amen, the sacrifice, where is the sacrifice is a powerful question that we're going to deal with on tonight. Amen. The statement of uh, belief is born out of relationship. Amen. The Lord will provide is born out of relationship. This confident statement that Abraham has said to his son Isaac is born out of his, com his confidence, amen, in the Lord. Amen. Uh, uh, because of the time he spent with the Lord. And that's the point that we want to make. Amen. As we spend time with the Lord, Amen. Our faith ought to be as Abraham. We don't have an offering yet, but if God told us to go to Mount Moriah, hallelujah, and sacrifice, amen, in the beginning of our trip, we may see lack, but our faith statement in him will is this, the Lord will provide for himself. I heard an old preacher say this, faith that has not been tested is faith that can't be trusted. Say again, faith that has not been tested is faith, amen, that cannot be trusted. Amen. God tested Abraham tonight. Amen. Deal with this subject. Your faith must be, it must be tested. Webster's definition of, of test, amen, is, uh, this is a powerful thing, amen, and I was pondering this for a while today. Abraham's, I mean, Webster's definition of test Amen, is a procedure intended to establish quality, performance, or reliability. Say again, test is defined as a procedure, 
process, it's a procedure, it's intended to establish, amen, quality. What sort is it of? A test, amen. It's intended to establish quality, performance, or reliability. Glory to God, end of, of something. Especially before it is, amen, it is to be taken, amen, widespread or worldwide, especially if it's going to be taken worldwide. It's got to be tested. My Mariah was necessary because in the seed, in Galatians said that seed is Christ. Amen. The nations shall be blessed. Hallelujah. I found this out. You can write this down. When we pass the test, it's not just for one generation. Hallelujah. It's for generations to come that this one who obeyed God, amen, uh, nations shall be blessed because of the one that obeyed God. Glory to God in the highest. Amen. Uh, there's only one question in this test that God has for Abraham. There's only one question, and the question came, amen, from Isaac. Glory to God. He says, amen, to his father, uh, look, I see the fire. You got the wood, but where is the lamb? Amen. So Isaac is well aware of the process. Amen. In his observation, he sees lack. In his observation, he sees lack. Father, amen, where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Hallelujah. Where is the lamb for the burnt offering? That's the only question asked in the test, and it comes from Isaac, and it comes from a state of observation based in experience that we're lacking something. <laughs> Glory to God. We're lacking something. I've observed, Father, that uh, we've done this several times. I see wood. I see fire. But, amen, where is the lamb for the offering? And Abraham's answer was stellar. Amen. My son, God will provide for himself a burnt offering. Hallelujah. Any time there is lack in your life, any time you observe the fact that something is missing, hallelujah. Amen. Uh, mature saints who have grown in the Lord can say in the same way that uh, Abram has said, hallelujah, amen, that God Amen. He will provide. Amen. In the Lord, he will provide. The test is a procedure. Thank you, Father. It's a procedure intended to establish quality. Establish, amen, performance. How well, how good will it perform? Amen. Attending to establish reliability of something. Amen. Especially before it is, amen, released into the, a, uh, to the widespread or to the world. In this particular case, it has to be, it has to be tested. Thank you, Father. It has to be tested. Amen. The other revelation that I see just observing the text that reminds us of Christ, it says, so Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac, his son. Glory to God. He took the fire in his hand and the knife. And the two of them went together. Abraham took the wood, amen, laid it on his son. And they, as they going up to worship, they going up to offer his son as a sacrifice is a picture of Christ, amen, uh, being paraded down the streets of Jerusalem. And they put on him the wood, amen, the cross for which he was to be executed. Hallelujah. And the master is taking him there to be sacrificed, his only begotten son. The difference is this time, amen, uh, uh, on Calvary, there was no turnaround. Hallelujah. Uh, Genesis 22, amen, in six is a picture of God preparing, thank you, Father, our Christ for the crucifixion. Isaiah said, amen, he laid the sins of, a, of us all, amen, laid it upon him. Thank you, Father. It's necessary that we see Christ in all of this. It's a picture of God teaching us of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Amen. Thank you, Lord. In 1 Peter the chapter 1, verse 3 through 9, this is what it says. 1 Peter chapter 1, best, ver verses 3 to, through 9, it says, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Christ. <laughs> Glory to God from the dead. Verse 4, to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for us, who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed at the last time. Look, listen to verse 6. In this you greatly rejoice, though, though, though now for a little while, if, it, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold, glory to God, that perish, the faith is, the genuineness of your faith is more precious than gold that perish, though it be tested by fire, may be found to the praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom, ha whom having not seen, you love. Though now, amen, you do not see him, yet believing, you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory receiving the end of your salvation, the end of your faith, the salvation of your soul. Thank you, Father. Amen. It's, amen. The, the, the text says in verse 7 that the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perish, though it is tested by fire. Hallelujah. Though it is tested by fire, it must be tested. James, the first chapter, verse 2 through 4. James, the first chapter, verse 2, 3, and 4 says this. My brother encountered all joy, <laughs> glory to God, when you fall into various trials or various tests, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. The testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work that you may be mature or perfect, amen, complete and lacking nothing, <laughs> amen. So the testing further equips us for the next phase in our life so that we don't try to proceed in God lacking. Glory to God. So we don't try to proceed in God without patience. Uh, you know, I heard somebody say something to the effect that don't ask for patience because, amen, trials come, amen, if you want to have patience, you got to go through something. So don't ask for patience. But the opposite of not asking for patience or not enduring the trial is to is to have the rest of your life and be weak, amen, be incomplete. Glory to God, to be prone to the attacks of the enemy simply because you are not willing to be tested by the fire of God. Amen. I'd rather endure infliction as a good soldier and uh and from it I'm equipped for the next phase in life then I will go my whole life impatient. Amen. The testing of your faith produces patience. Now I can, amen, I'm patient, amen, with the, my marriage. I'm patient with my children. I'm patient in testing. I'm patient when the enemy is tempting me. Amen. I got something to work with now that I earned in the fire. A uh, glory. I got something I can work with now that I earned in the fire. This is mine. Anything you earn can't be taken away from you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I would rather be tested and produce patience than to be all my life impatient. Amen. I'm an open target for the enemy. Amen. I'm a walking time bomb when it comes down to my wife and my children because at any minute, that impatience, amen, nature is going to come up. At any minute, I'm going to fail because I haven't, I was scared of the test. I was scared of the test. So that statement became null and void to me. Amen. Take me through what I want to go through. Amen. What I need to go through. Amen. Uh, I don't know, baby, two years ago, coming up, amen, in March, uh, unfortunately, uh, contracted COVID. Went through for about a couple of weeks and blah, blah, blah. But I was fat. I, know I, was, I wasn't eating. All of this, blah, blah, blah. Amen. After about a week of the restoration process, 
amen, I start to feel something different in my spirit, man, that I didn't have before COVID. Uh, uh, you know, I was equipped with something different that I didn't have. And I thought to myself, I rejoice greatly. Glory to God, amen, that when I came out of this, I came out of it not just a recovered health, but I came out of it with more spiritual power. Glory to God. Never be afraid to go through. Amen. Because what you're going to receive out of the test, hallelujah, glory to God, amen, is going to be precious, worth more than gold. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 17 through 19, it said this, By faith Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he, and he who had received the promise offered up his only begotten son, verse 18, of whom it is, amen, it was said, in Isaac your seed shall be called, glory to God, concluding that God was able to raise him from the dead, even from the, amen, from the dead, raise him up even from the dead, from which he also received him in a figurative sense, amen, so that's a, that's, it was a figurative sense, Amen, that he received him back from the dead. Glory to God. Amen, but God tested Abraham's faith. He tested Abraham's, amen, faith. Faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And amen, Abraham believed that even if he had to slay Isaac, God would have raised him from the dead. So he's in a win-win situation. Glory to God. God, God is, amen, is a testing God. Jeremiah 17 and 10 in the Amplified said, I, the Lord, search and examine the mind and test the heart, amen, to give each man according to his ways, according to the result of his deed. Psalm 119 and 37, 39, some, I said one Psalm 139, 139, the 139th Psalm, verse 23 through 24 says, search me, O Lord, and know my heart. Try me or test me and know my anxieties. And see if there's any wicked way in me, and then lead me in the way of everlasting. Glory to God. Amen. Test me, Lord. Try me and see. Glory to God. Amen. Uh, and so this particular uh, instance is seen, glory to God, there's so many blessings seen in it. Amen. Uh, and so the issue is why worry when we have a relationship with Jehovah Jireh? Why worry when we have a relationship, glory to God, with, with uh, Jehovah Jireh? Amen. Uh, uh, Abraham did not know where uh, the uh, lamb was, but he did know that God would provide one. He did not know the answer to the, the son's immediate question, but he did know that the Lord will provide for himself. You better talk bogus. Amen. He did not know the answer to the son's immediate question, but he had enough relationship in God to know that if he said, amen, go offer a sacrifice, amen, the Lord will provide. Glory to God. You may not know all of the answers to your children's question, but glory to God, you need to know that the Lord will provide. Hallelujah. Amen. Why worry when there's Jehovah Jireh, Matthew 6, Amen. In 25, Matthew 6, the gospel according to Matthew chapter 6 and 25 says, Therefore I say unto you, do not worry about your life. Glory to God. What you will eat, what you will drink, or about your body, or what to put on it. Is, is not your life more than food and your body more than clothing? Clothing. Look at the birds of the air. Let's, let's take them for example. For they need the soul or reap, neither in all gather in barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? Which of you, by worry, can add, amen, one cubic to your, of your stature, which is 18 inches? So, so why do you worry about clothing? Let's consider the lilies of the field and how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, yet I say Solomon, that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. So if God so clothed the grass of the field, I'm talking to somebody, which is today is and tomorrow thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? O oh, you of little faith. That's the problem right there. 
Amen. Worry is happens in the absence of great faith. Worrying happens in the act, absence of great activated faith. Amen. The Lord will provide. Therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? After, after all of these things, Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows what all the things, amen, that you need. Your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow we will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Hallelujah. Amen. So I, 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 I want to uh, conclude in saying, amen, this matter. Glory to God. Your faith in God's provision is based upon your progressive relationship. Amen. Glory to God. And when you pass the test, generations will be blessed based upon your passing the test. Galatians says the seed, amen, God says your seed shall be blessed. And that seed is one that the ability as to have descendants as the stars of the heaven, to have descendants as numerous as the sand of the seashore is found in Christ. Amen, your seed, not as in many, but seed as in one. Glory to God. Amen. So I exhort you in this matter. Amen. And when God is testing us, when God is testing us, amen, rejoice and be glad that the fact that, amen, your reward is great in the Lord and great, amen. And not only that, it's going to be a blessing throughout all generations because of one man's, uh, amen, obedience. Rejoice, amen, that the testing of your faith, it produces something. It produces patience. Rejoice, amen, because the testing of your faith, it produces patience. You would rather go through the test that God has provided, amen, to work your work you and produce faith, uh, patience than to be all your life impatient. Amen. You would, and we would much, much rather, in that case, if you don't go through all your life, you're a sitting duck. Amen. So if the devil get ready to start mess, he can always start with you. Why? Because you're impatient and refuse the process. <laughs> refuse the procedure, amen, to come to the place of being patient. Amen. And so all your life, you could be a target for the enemy. In every group you're in, he'll target you simply because you haven't been through the process and that impatience, amen, will always start mess. That impatience will always start mess. I say this in my conclusion, faith that has not been tested, amen, is faith that cannot be trusted. The statement the Lord will provide is a statement of faith. Abram sees nothing, amen, and but he's obedient enough to offer up, amen, Isaac, amen. He was going to do exactly what God told him to do. The one he loved, he was going to offer. Can you get that in your spirit? He waited 25 years to get Isaac, amen. And I don't know how old he was, but he was old enough to rationalize, amen. There's the wood, there's the fire. What's going on? He's old enough to climb the mountain with the old man. He's old enough to resist, amen, as Christ did not resist the father. But, amen, uh, he recognized what was going on, amen, but the Lord provided for, for them a ram in the bush. Amen. A scapegoat. Thank you, Father. Amen. So uh, the point is this, and the exhortation is this. Glory to God is that that statement, the Lord will provide, a Jehovah Jireh is born out of a mature relationship. May the Lord continue to mature you. May he continue to build you so that that statements of faith may come out of continual growing relationship that the Lord will provide. I may not have it in my bank, but the Lord will provide. I may not have the thought how to handle the marriage problem now, but the Lord will provide. I may not understand how to deal with and talk with my children right now about their growing, but yes, amen, I understand this. The Lord will provide. It's a statement of faith that comes out of an ever-growing 
amen, assurance that comes out of, a, amen, a relationship with the Almighty God. Glory to God. Amen. May the Lord grow you in this thing. And may your faith confession be one that is, that is solid in faith that I believe. And amen, because I believe, I declare, I speak forth in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you tonight for everyone that's under the sound of my voice. May we be clear, may we be strong and established in you, Father, and that you get the glory out of our life. Be glorified as we go along, amen. This we know, this we understand, that the steps of a good man are ordered by you. And we bless you now, we magnify you in Jesus' name. Amen.